What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today, we're going to be breaking down a solo endgame build for the Warlock class that allow you to stand your ground in terms of DPS and also guarantee you around 100 to 150k damage via grenades, heavy and super. The idea of the build is to allow you to take on legend to master level endgame content with an adequate build which you can bring along for 90% of the content in game and not need to change up so much of the gear for certain activities such as raids, nightfalls or dungeons. Although not grandmaster worthy, not many players will be looking for such a build for such content because of the limited factors of mods and gears required. Anything master level within groups or solo is where the build will shine. With how much endgame content is around and how there is so much bosses with meaty health that can take a while to dwindle, the following build will aid you in reducing such health in a matter of seconds and to be fully honest with you, most of the gear in the Sotic shown will be familiar to those who may have tried an alternative variant before. Because of this, I believe this is one of the best warlock builds to own if you're ever adventuring into endgame. It has everything you need and more and you can adapt it to what you feel is best. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I'll really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Attunement of Chaos for both his Super and the Chaos Accelerant Grenade Perk, which we'll be making full use of. Chaos Accelerant and Controverse Hold are two of the most commonest setups that you will ever witness because of how powerful and synergized the two are. Controverse allows us to not only get reduced damage by charging grenades, but it also give back a random amount of energy while doing so. Chaos Accelerant on the other hand will grant players increased grenade damage while charging. Both of these together overall makes your grenades both lethal and rewarding for the payout they provide. Just alone, your grenades can be pulling off some hefty numbers that will be enough to weaken or outright kill most champions that get caught within it. And if you're lucky, you may be able to get your grenades fully back from doing so. The only downside to doing such a combo is the random amount of grenade energy you get, which is truly random as the name states. Sometimes you'll get a full amount and other times you'll get a small amount. To fix this, I have attached the Impulse Recycler mod where Grenade Final Blows will grant you a random amount of energy back. Since both parties are random, this may sound outlandish to use, however I found that the two together works out really well and the majority of times I'll always get my grenades back. While that area of grenade is covered, I'll also be using the Breach and Clear mod for a 30% debuff that can apply to certain enemies. This here will guarantee me kills via charge grenades or I can opt in to use my super which the initial blast will kill them and the leftover trackers can do the AOE damage to boot. This is perfect as using this against a boss or champion for example will net me a high damage ratio to where I can easily burn through boss's health in the first phase. From some of the gameplay you'll be seeing, my damage output alone is enough to get an ultra down and out within the first phase, cause them to move on to the next stage or outright kill them which will vary at times. 90% of the times, the most consistent way for me to do a huge amount of damage against a boss is to weaken them first with my breach and clear mod, use my grenades and then also use super if I have any. And if this is done correctly, this alone will get you 100k plus in damage, however we can go higher if we include the weapons being used. For weapons, I've created the loadout to fit most endgame activities that include champions as they will be the main things that will allow the build to shine in. Like my last video, the weapons used are what I would consider viable for the many activities you get involved. However, you can change the setup to fit your own style of play. My primary will be the 7 Seraph Officer Revolver which will be used as an anti-overload weapon and is great for the amount of DPS you can pull in activities once it activates Ambitious Assassin. As I'll be using the grenade launcher with Breach and Clear for the debuff, the hand cannon will stun any overload champions and then I can follow up with my grenades, heavy or secondary if I choose. One thing to note is that the hand cannon for DPS against a champion is very effective, but only if you have the ambitious assassin active. The one perk on the weapon can push my magazine size from a 14 to around 18 to 20 upon getting a kill via a normal add. This with a debuff and time payload providing me extra damage is enough to get a single champion down to about a quarter of health, to which you can then mop up as you please. The only downside to such a move is that it eats through your ammo reserves very quickly and is not recommended to fully do if there is too much enemies around you and generally firing at you. For our secondary I'm using the truth teller with blinding grenades, auto load and holster and disruption break 
and this will allow me to control the area of blinding grenades explosion and deep of enemies for even more damage. Disruption Break for example will grant the user a 50% kinetic weapon damage increase if you destroy enemy shield with it, which for my hand cannon is a great benefit. At the same time, we can also use the Breach and Clear mod for that 30% debuff against enemies, which will benefit the whole of my gear and team in the long run. When you break the weapon down, it has two roles. The first thing, it can be used to weaken and blind enemies if we manage to break their shield, which will be very useful in master content that have the match game modifier. And secondly, with the Breach and Clear mod, we can weaken bosses or ultras with the weapon, while also stunning those that surround to protect the boss. This makes the weapon one of the key items that will provide the necessary survival you will need for most endgame content. And taking on any solo endgame content can be both a reward and a heart inducing event to which not everyone can master. This grenade launcher with its perk can actually make doing these contents a lot more lenient and easier since you can dwindle enemies health in a safe manner. If for heavy, I have chosen to use the 2 tail fox rocket launcher that is surprisingly very powerful and effective against the majority of bosses. It has two effects that applies to the target once fired. The first one will provide a solar damage burn effect to the enemy, while the second will land a void suppression effect on the target. Thanks to the season of the chosen rocket buff, the twin tail is one of the best rockets to use for overall DPS as you're firing two rockets instead of the one with added effects. Within the build, this rocket alone can produce over 100k in damage but only when you apply the breach and clear mod and apply the Argonne Ordnance mod which is around a 20% rocket buff when active. For the stats, we need to focus on both survival and damage over time to allow us to retain our superiority while out on the field. The key to this will be to rely on mods to help improve survival rate and damage over time. However, because of how limited we are in mod choices, we have to be very careful in this area in terms of how we go about this. Luckily, I have left the mod section wide open to the point of allowing users to change whatever mods they need and it won't take too much away from the core of the build. For personal survival, recovery will be the utmost important area for allowing us to recover quickly. At 60 to 70, this should be enough for you to quickly get back in action without a long delay involved. In the meme of the mods, I've attached protective light for that extra defense while in critical health and concussive dampener times 2 to reduce damage from AoE attacks. Now, depending on the activity, I may swap protective light for well of tenacity as Well of Tenacity will actively provide me with a 10% damage reduction for 10 seconds. This will be useful as I can proc this mod by using my grenades a lot while at the same time gaining ability buffs from collecting a singular well. Although Protective is better as it provides you with a stronger damage reduction once you hit one third of your health, this is only really useful when you tackle massive level content and generally can't pick up wells. This is why when thinking about the build, I decided to pick both Elemental Well and Charge of Light as they both grant me benefits in multiple ways. For damage, our grenades are covered by our discipline at a rate of 70. This is more than enough for you to passively gain your grenades back while still actively playing into the mods. I would not recommend you aim for anything higher as it's kind of wasteful doing so, but also you have mods and your exotic available that will help push this area first. For example, NG Recycler, Elemental Ordnance and Innovation mod-wise are generally the only mods you need to help steady out your grenade's energy over time. Anything more will lead to wasteful resources which could be used for improving other key areas. And then lastly, our super will be kept at 60 as we won't be 100% reliant on it, but we will be using it when we get the chance to. I have added in the Ashes to Ashes mod times 2 to help garner super energy while using my grenades. This pairing with a grenade focus build is perfect for getting your super up and ready in a few seconds. Now onto the mods and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall role of the build. For head we have resilience, ashes to ashes times 2 and protective light mod. For arm we have mine and recovery, overload hand cannon, impulse recycler and taking charge mod. Chest we have resilience, concussive dampener times 2 and elemental orders mod. A leg we have discipline. Innovation, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, and Argon and Ordnance mod. Bond with Minor Discipline, and Bridge and Clear mod. As an endgame build, you have every tool and power freely available for you to access and stand your ground against the biggest and baddest enemies around. You have great grenades that will be continuous in both damage and duration. You have great weapons that can counter all types of threats including champions. And your biggest amount of damage can be split from heavy, super and grenades 
all which are plenty enough for you to reach the highest level of damage you can pull. The setup is simple and allow players to mix and match how they choose while still retaining part of what makes the build the build. This is important as not every content will allow the build to shine as you may have moments where you need to play a more defensive role or you need to swap out your weapons or mods etc. The only cool part of the build that would most likely change is the super and exotic in hand unless you're using a super that corresponds with your exotic. Personally I find this build interesting as your main damage is from your grenades and super. However, you can also easily achieve this by using your rocket launcher as Twin Tails really packs a punch. If I had Argonaut Ordnance times 3 available for a 35% buff, I'll easily be doing more damage than what my grenades can offer, but that requires a lot of risk and not dying so easily. For some testing I did, I did try this build out in Legend Master Nightfalls and Master Empire Hunt, and although I was a few levels down from last time, I still had the ability to aid my team and still put in the damage that everyone on the team needed. Unlike the Fair Winter build where damage was a slight issue, this time damage was nothing of an issue thanks to what we were going for. Even when certain enemies did become an issue, I could use my grenade launcher to slow them down which absolutely allowed me to smash through them afterwards. Now breaking numbers down, against the Wyvern Bot and Override, once I applied the debuff, my charge grenade did around 3003 times 13 ticks, which is around 39,039. Once I reapplied the debuff and used my rockets with the Argonaut Ordnance mod active, I did 42,189 times 2 and an extra 12,040 times 2, which when combined together equals 108,458 damage. Now combine that final sum with the grenade damage and you get around 147,497 damage in total. You alone will be outputting around 150,000 in one enemy, and this can go even higher once we apply the super as well, but the window for damage is very tight for most bosses and it's not always viable. Even though we are a few levels down, we can still be useful which I find is a viable resource for most players who aren't at the standard level of being end game ready or just come back into the game. Although most of what I have shown is available for all at first, gathering most of the items won't take too long in game. And one downside to the build is that although the huge damage numbers are great, you're not always going to have the clear opportunity to blast out this max damage and have it your way. If you were to use this against the Templar boss in the raid, then I can see you doing really well damage wise, but this is a big if if you don't get killed by the ants or if by the boss. If anything kills you while you are midway through your damage run, you pretty much have to start over, which could be frustrating if you don't have the mods gear to help you achieve this. I personally believe this build for a returning vet is one of the best builds they can use if they want to get up to date with the game and not worry so much of needing to have max gear to even do damage. Your grenades, super and heavy can hold their own but when combined can allow you to melt most enemies health in a matter of seconds. Plenty of room to mix and match and what is shown is generally what you get. So if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 lore content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thank you for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.